Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well. This video is a snapshot looking back at June 2021 for the Phoenix metro area real estate market. I'm going to bullet point a couple of different statistics for you. At the end of this video, I will actually put up the sheet that has all of the information in case you want to dive into it, um, break it down, study it, etc. Well, the first statistic we're going to look at is the number of closed units we had in June 2021 and that would be 9,682 homes were closed. Last month we had 9,249 so we're about there 400 plus or minus more this month. Last year at this time we're at 9,249 so although we hear the term and I joke I'll jokingly say we hear the word crazy market and I'm not going to uh, I guess I'm going against the grain here because I'm not going to agree with that and I think I I say it that way only because when you've been in the business for a longer period of time the ebbs and flows of real estate nothing really seems to be crazy it just seems to be more left and right of the middle so my point being is last year to this year we're pretty much about the same amount of housing or houses sold, which again, it is a lower inventory. Nobody's gonna sugarcoat that. But again, you can kind of see the flow. We're about the same as we were last year and as we were last month. So that is the number of homes closed in 2021, June. I'm not really sure why, but this second bullet point or statistic is one that a lot of people beacon in on. So let's get into it and that would be the number of active listings in june 2021 we had 5002 active properties last month at this time we had 4195 houses that were active and for the record active in the world of real estate means for sale or still available so that's kind of what that term means active equals for sale and then last year at this time so that would be june 2020 we had 7642 active listings on the market so we are definitely down from last year but we are up a wee bit from last month Hello everyone, this video contains information we think you'll enjoy. If so, please give it a thumbs up. Also, remember to click that subscribe button. If you have any questions or just wanna say hi, please do so in the comment section below. Next, we have the number of properties that are new to the market or coming available. And that would be for June of 2021, 10,114. Well, that number definitely seems to be up from last year. Let me look and well, let's start with last month. We had 9,714. So we are up from last month, which is good. And, and by the way, when I say last month, I don't want to confuse anybody, but again, we are talking now about June 2021. It's currently July 2021. So when I say for the sake of this video last month, I'm actually talking about May 2021. So that being said, we are or were up in June 2021, up from May of 2021. Now looking back at last year, June of 2020, we were at 8,323 homes. And just like I suspected, we are absolutely up. It's not a huge number. I would definitely say we're still in a lower inventory market, but it never hurts to be up roughly 2,000 homes over last year at this time. Moving right along, we're going to talk about the supply of inventory. And I did keynote, skipped a couple of statistics that were sold to list ratio and the listing success rate. Both of those, again, can be found at the data sheet that I will make sure I put at the end of this video. They're pretty much self-explanatory and they're not really, I don't think most people beacon in on those particular numbers. Um, but again, you'll see that they're both very high, so the probability of success is very high. When you're up at that percentile, again, you'll see them 
then they're really at this moment or this market not very big risk of your house not selling in this current market okay on to again supply of inventory we're currently still low we're at a point five two months so roughly two weeks of inventory and i'm always asked what's a healthy inventory traditionally i like to see between three and five months so a mean average of four months of inventory is nice so you can see two weeks that's not exactly where a buyer would want to be for the sellers it's a definitely a, a time for them to consider selling a property or at least looking into that and on that note i'll kind of segue into the fact that if you're out there listening and i hope you are and considering selling your property please reach out to us all of our contact information is in the descriptions of these videos we'd be more than happy to give you a free what we call CMA or property value report. There's no obligation. Let's just talk and uh, see where that number falls in. Maybe you just have a couple of questions. We would be more than happy to answer any of them for you, especially now when for sellers, it may be a great time to cash out again, being that the inventory is about two weeks. Last month now at this time, we were out about the same 0.45. So, you know, again, very similar to what it was in May, was in June similar. Last year at this time, we were slightly higher, and I believe that was about 0 0.80 months. Again, all the numbers where you're going to, you know, staying within fractions or days or weeks. I mean, from last month to last year, we really haven't moved that gauge that month on inventory that's available or readily available for the market. So, as not to sound like the proverbial broken record, we definitely have a lower inventory. Great time to be selling. And if you're thinking about buying, it's still not a bad time to buy. You just definitely want to have an agent or a team of agents in your corner looking out for your best behalf, protecting you and walking you through that process. Average days on the market. Okay, that's a very, for me at least, interesting statistic that I like to keep my eyes on and make sure the team is well aware of that number as it truly does pertain to both sides of the market, meaning buyers and or sellers. And in June of 2021, it was 25 days. That's how long the average house stayed on the market. Now, last month, or again, May of 2021, as we're speaking about June of 2021, the houses were almost on the market for the exact same amount of time. Well, technically 26 days. So they stayed on the market one extra day. Looking back now, however, a year ago, they were actually on the market for 53 days. And so, I mean, gorilla math, as I like to say, double the amount of time. That's a significant sign and all indicators that it's a seller's market and houses are, for lack of a you know better term, flying off the market. Well, 25 days isn't 25 minutes, but again, they're definitely not lasting forever. So you, what this also tells you is when you're thinking about buying a property, you definitely unequivocally be in a shadow of a doubt, want to make sure that you are pre-qualified, have your lending or mortgage ducks in a row, because when we are out there dialing in, fine tuning the properties that you want to see and we find one that you fall in love with as quick as humanly possible we want to submit that offer and be well i guess the as the saying goes the early bird gets the worm just because your offer is in first doesn't mean it's going to be selected but you definitely can't go to second base until you take your foot off first so one of the first things we want to do is make sure that you have every possible opportunity to have your contract accepted on a property that you're looking for. So days on market, kind of dial in or tell us how quick we should be moving along in the whole process of buying a property. And one of the uh, points that goes along with 
out there shopping would be making sure that you are able to purchase the property and that being mortgage wise, unless of course you're paying cash. But even if you are paying cash, that doesn't necessarily mean the house is going to wait for you. Somebody else comes into it first, puts an offer in, seller likes what they see, bada bing, bada boom, you snooze, you lose. Last, but certainly not least, as the saying goes, the average sales price. This one kind of makes me chuckle a little bit because I guess it's all perceived value. Your house really isn't worth anything per se until you sell it. But I always think a lot like perhaps somebody watching their stocks go up and down during a, you know, a day trading period of time to see what the value is of said stock. That's how I kind of relate the average sales price of a home. So... In June 2021, the average sales price was $512,743. That was up slightly from last month, again, May 2021, which was about 509836 so $509,836, so up a couple thousand dollars from last month. But the big, I guess, wow factor, which is still to me mind boggling, is the average sales price last year, which would have been June 2020, that number was $370,971. So, I mean, if you can just imagine, get the old calculator out and do the percent or return on investment of that property, another reason or why I will repeat again, if you're thinking about selling your property, now would be a great time. But I'll also say, not trying to speak with forked tongue, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad time to buy. I technically think here in the Valley of the Sun, by the numbers and some of the just factors, be it the weather, the jobs, the low taxes, and just the number of people moving here, it doesn't seem, again, in my humble opinion, no magic wand, no crystal ball to look into, that the prices are going to start slowing down or decreasing anytime soon. So we've come to another end of our videos. I truly hope you enjoyed what you heard. So until next time, please be safe. God bless America. We'll talk again soon.